have sailed. I have moved about this world of ours, and ever in search of the finest of its kind, we bring you the tops in spine chillers. <laughs> Creaking door. The manufacturers of State Express 3.5 Filter King cigarettes take pleasure in presenting the creaking. the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders. And the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3.5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. Well, why didn't you say so, darling? Here, I'll 
back my scarf. I'd rather go back to the house. Really, Janice, you're acting like a stupid child. Now, come on. Let me put this around your neck. All right. There. Now, wrap it good and tight so it'll be warm. Janice, please. What's wrong, Janice? Did you think I was going to hurt you? No. No. Well? I just noticed. My bag. Your bag. It's gone. Are you sure you had it with you, my darling? Yes, positive. I must have dropped it somewhere along the beach. Well, we'll look for it in the morning. It may be gone by then. I had a pin in it, the diamond pin my mother left me. Why do you lie to me, Janice? Lie? I didn't lie. That pin you're talking about. It's there on your dress now. Oh, so it is. I'd forgotten. I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. It's my nerves. Well, perhaps we should look for your bag after all. If, if you don't mind, Wallace, I'll wait here till you come back. But I wouldn't want to leave you alone, my dear. Here in the dark and the fog. Your knees, my dear. Oh, I, I feel much easier now. I'm not afraid. Very well. I'll be back Now be sure to stay right here. All right, Wallace. <laughs> You? I thought you went the other way. What? Why didn't you answer me? Please. Please, what? Miss Winston? Yes. You're the one who wrote those articles about the strangler. Yes, that's me. Well, if you want some more information for your stories, drive out to Ronson Point immediately. Who's speaking? The man in the white scarf has just claimed his fourth victim. What? What did you say? Alec, get on the other phone quickly. Uh, all right. Call the police. Ask them to trace the call. All right. Now... Would you please tell me again what it was you said? Are you saying that another murder has taken place? Hello? Hello? Oh, don't bother about the call, Alec. He hung up. What's it all about, Dottie? The strangler in the white scarf. What? The man on the phone gave me a tip on the fourth victim. It may be a crank, but I'm going to make sure. Ronson Point, he said. Dottie, you can't go out there, but don't you realize that it might have been the Strag himself who telephoned you? Wanted to get even with you for the stories you wrote? Yes, Alec. It has occurred to me. And that's the reason we're going out to Ronson Point right away. After all, it must have been the strangler. Look, Dottie, a white scarf tied around her neck. Strangled the same way as the others. We'd better call the police. Yes, Alex, we'd better. The same pattern. Perhaps Dr. Hirschman was right after all. Who's Dr. Hirschman? A psychiatrist. He has a theory that the strangler either visited or read a, a great deal about northern India. India? Well, what's that got to do with murders? Many years ago, the... There was a caste who killed their enemies by strangling them with strips of white cloth. The cloth was knotted and pulled in the same manner as that white scarf around the woman's throat. Just a moment. Over there. Where? Behind that row of trees. I, I thought I saw something move. Something white. Oh, Alec. I'm not sure, but we're not taking any chances. Come on. Alec, this isn't the way to the car. I know. So where are you taking me? That light over there, through the bushes. Into the house? Yes, perhaps. Let's run for it. It's... That strange sound. I wonder what it is. I don't know. It, it seems to be an animal of some kind. I've never heard anything like it before. That's my pet tiger. <laughs> oh. you, you live here? Yes. 
with my brother. We're, we're looking for a telephone. Now, I'm Dorothy Winston, a, a reporter from the Tribune. I don't care where you're from. You're trespassing on private grounds. You'll please leave immediately. But someone's been murdered. She found her body on the beach. You will do as I told you. Get off these grounds. My brother is ill. Much too ill to be. Wallace! Wallace! Go back to the house, Ralph. Oh, Wallace, I've been looking for you. Where have you been? You know very well I've been out here feeding the tiger. I thought perhaps you went back to the place Ralph. where the... You shouldn't be out here. You know what the doctor said about the night here. Now go back to the house. But who are these people, Wallace? The young lady is a reporter, Ralph. A reporter from the Tribune. I'd like to use your phone, but your brother won't let me. I didn't want to disturb you, Ralph. I won't be disturbed. Then I suppose it's all right to make the call now, Mr... Grimsdale. Oh, very well. We'll take you to it. Come along. If you're a reporter, I suppose you want to phone your paper about... <laughs> Wallace! My arm, you're hurting. Forgive me, Ralph, I, if I held you too tightly. You know how unsteady you've been lately. I, I didn't want you to fall. You squeezed my arm because you didn't want me to talk. Now, really, Ralph, you have these people believing I'm some sort of monster. You're free to say anything you please. You know that. Say anything you wish. I... I... You see... You've nothing to say. Oh, Wallace. Please forgive me. I'm just upset because you left me alone so much tonight. But I haven't left you alone, Ralph. I don't know why you say such things. I've been in the house with you all evening. Don't you remember? Oh. Oh, yes. Now I remember. You've been with me all evening... In the house. All right, Ralph. I think you're strong enough now to take uh, these people to the phone. I'm going to go outside a while and finish feeding my pet. Yes, Wallace. This way, please. You go with this gentleman, Alec. Uh, but Dotty. Please, Alec. Telephone for me. All right, but hurry. <laughs> what do you find to be so amusing, Mr. Grimsdale? I find the obvious very amusing, Miss Winston. You stayed behind to watch me. Isn't that correct? Yes, in a way. Don't you think you're acting a bit rash? Perhaps, but but that pet tiger of yours out there fascinates me. Oh? It's quite a rare species of tiger, isn't it? I didn't realize you're an expert. I have reason to know about that particular breed of tiger. Reason? You have been to India, haven't you? No. You're lying. I'd be a bit more careful of what I said if I were you, Miss Winston. You're not fooling me, Mr. Grimsdale, with that alibi of yours. Now, look here. You were on the beach earlier this evening. Ridiculous. You've changed your suit. You've changed it because the other one had a piece torn out of it. I found that piece on the beach, next to that woman's body. Now, you are lying. Am I? For your information, Mr. Grimsdale... I have that torn piece right here in my hand. Uh, give it to me. Oh, uh, 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 my throat. Open your hand. Oh, don't open it. Oh, wait. Uh, all right, uh, I'll open it. <laughs> I knew you were lying. There's nothing in your hand. Of course not. But I found out what I wanted to know. No? What are you talking about? The way you nutted my scarf, Mr. Greensdale, and... The way you tightened it around my throat. That's all I wanted to know. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. We promise you... It's the smoothest cigarette you can get.
It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders. And the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3-5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3-5s today. tell me you try to choke her with the scarf. Why did you run away? You knew I called the police to run away. <laughs> really? Yeah, you're talking nonsense. I have nothing to fear from the police. Where do you think you're going? I'm going back to the house to tell them the news. What news are you talking about, Grimsdale? The fact that you and Miss Winston are outrageous liars. What? I looked all along this section of the beach. I found no trace of a woman's body. You're just saying that. It's a trick you're trying to pull. The body's over there by those rocks, and you know it. Lying, am I? Then go and see for yourself. I will. Believe me, Lancey. You're just wasting your time. It's gone. What did you do with the body, Grimsdale? What? But where did he go to? Where did he go? You seem very much at ease, Mr. Grimsdale, for a man who has so little time to live. Oh, I don't know, Miss Winston. I have an idea I'll live longer than you will. Don't you think it's a little late for you to threaten me? Miss Winston, you're meddling in something that shouldn't concern you. Alec Lancy was my fiancé. You'd do better to let the police capture his murderer. They already have. They won't keep me here another 24 hours. And when I'm free, Miss Winston... Oh, you can't frighten me. Janice Craig's body was found this morning. In a clump of bushes. Very interesting. Well, I can go. You can go now. But, but you can't let this man go. Now, look, miss. I've got my instructions. This way, Grimsdale. Uh, just a moment. Oh, you uh, have something else to say, Miss Winston? I haven't given up, Mr. Grimsdale. I'll prove that you murdered Alec and the others. If it's the last thing I ever do. I see. Well, Miss Winston, who knows? It might very well be the last thing you will ever do. Ralph? Ralph? Oh, Miss Winston. Thank heavens you're here. I was afraid you wouldn't come. You said it was a matter of life and death. Oh, it is, believe me. My brother Wallace lied to the police. And he made me lie for him, too. What do you mean? He told you and the police he was in the house with me all evening. But he wasn't. I was the one who telephoned you that night. I thought it was your voice, but I wasn't sure. Go on. Wallace was out with Janice that night. I saw them walk toward the beach. Why did you call me instead of the police? I was afraid to call the police. Afraid of what Wallace might do to me. I see. He, he'd kill me if he thought I was talking to you like this. But I just had to tell someone. I just had to. Did your brother tell you why he wanted you to lie for him? Yes. But I didn't believe him. What reason did he give you? He said he had nothing to do with Janice's murder. But there was no way of 
proving his innocence. He was afraid he would be found guilty if I didn't do as he told me. I see. Tell me, Ralph. Your brother's been to India, hasn't he? Why do you ask me that? Please answer my question. Yes. We lived in the Punjab for five years. I thought so. When we saw the tiger in that cage, I... What's the matter? The tiger. It isn't there, now. The cage is empty. Your brother must have taken it away. Yes, Miss Winston. I did. Oh, Wallace! I took it away because, unfortunately, it's dead. It was shot. <laughs> oh, Wallace, uh, I... What uh, were you I, saying, uh, Sir Ralph? I didn't say anything. Not anything. Go into the house immediately. Now, wait a minute. Are you meddling again, Miss Winston? I'm going to protect the Crown's key witness in the case against you, Mr. Grinsdale. So, Ralph, you told her. <laughs> yes. Yes, I told her. I told her everything. I don't care what you do to me. I don't care because now, I... Stop that. Stop that. It's <laughs> Stop that. Stop that. You're not through giving orders to anyone, Mr. Grimsdale. Put that gun away, you fool. Don't you dare move. I promise if you do, I'll fire. Ralph, hurry. Call the police. I'll keep him here until the police arrive. Ralph, don't do it. Call the police, I say. He'll kill you too if you don't. Uh, yes. Yes, he, he will. I'll call him right away. Ralph. Ralph, come back. He'll be back, Mr. Grimsdale. With the police. You're making a mistake. There's no mistake about you now. Not after what your brother told me. For all you know, I may just have been trying to protect Ralph. It's obvious how strange he is. It's too late to blame it on him. But I'm innocent. And I can prove it if you'd only give me half a chance. Like the chance you gave my Alex? I wasn't anywhere near Lansing when he was killed. I ran away and left him alone on the beach. And I suppose the same thing happened with Janice Craig. I was in love with Janice. I was going to marry her. Ralph was always afraid that he'd be left alone. <laughs> you can't make me believe that, Mr. Grimsdale. Just give me some kind of a chance, Miss Winston. Before it's too late for both of us. I admit I was with Janice at night. But I didn't do it. I couldn't have done it. What do you mean, you couldn't have? I'll show you why, if you go with me to the place it happened. Do you think I'm that foolish? I know, Miss Winston. You want to find your fiancé's murderer. But you'll never find the killer if they could have picked me. Please, give me a chance to prove to you who the real killer is before it's too late. All right, Mr. Grimsdale. I'll give you just this one chance. Janice and I were standing just about here on the beach. Go on. Janice was frightened. She had good reason to be. Please. You said you'd give me a chance to explain. All right, continue. But remember, I'll fire this gun on the slightest provocation. Janice had just made mention of the mysterious strangler. She felt a sudden chill. So I placed my scarf over her shoulders. A white scarf? Yes, I've always had a preference for white scarves. It's like the one you're wearing now. Huh? Uh, I didn't realize I'd put it on this evening. Perhaps, Mr. Grimsdale, you do many things you don't realize. You think I'm insane. You don't have much time left, Mr. Greenfield. Go on with your explanation. Well, as I said, I took off my scarf and placed it over Janice's shoulders like this. No, you don't. But, Miss Winston... Get your hands away from me. But I... Put that scarf back where it is. Very well. But I only wanted to show you what happened. I knew it would be something like this, Mr. Greenfield. I knew you wanted to get me down here on the beach so you could kill me like you did the other five. No, no, Miss Winston. That isn't the reason. Out of those five people, Janice was the only one I knew. I couldn't possibly have a motive for killing the others. They were total strangers to me. Psychopathic murderers very often kill without motive. Yes, I know. That's why I wanted to tell you about Ralph. A person like him might kill only for the thrill it gives him. Do you have anything more to tell Yes, me? just one more thing. Janice told me that she'd lost her bag. I started back along the beach to look for it. Yes? It was difficult finding anything because of the fog. I went about a hundred yards. Yes. And I gave up the search. I returned here and found Janice strangled to death with my scarf. I returned to the house immediately because I knew I'd be blamed for this. Wait. What is it? Over there. Beside the rock. It looks like a woman's handbag. Come on. It is a bag. 
It's Janice's missing bag. You'd better pick it up, Miss Winston. No, you pick it up. You still don't believe me. Pick it up, I said. All right. I will. I don't know why you don't trust me now. You have the gun and nothing go... I knew you couldn't resist another victim, Miss Winston. I knew. That's where you're wrong, Mr. Greenfield. Entirely wrong. There are other ways of committing murder. I just wanted to feel the scarf tighten around your neck just for a moment. Get up. And I knew it was you. I just had to pull this. How did you know? That night I ran from the beach. I saw a woman at the edge of the woods. A woman wearing a white scarf like you're wearing now, Miss Winston. I followed you back to town, to your office. That's where the police were wrong. They were looking for a man, and all the time it was a woman. But they'll never know. After I kill you with a gun with which I killed the tiger, it'll be all over. There'll be no more strangling. No, Miss Winston. You couldn't stop killing any more than you can stop breathing. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'll tell the police you tried to murder me like you did the others, and I had to shoot you in self-defense. After the gunshot, it'll all be over. Finished. I have to wait, Wallace, until you've moved out of the line of fire. Oh. Oh. She's dead. Yes, love. Just as she said. After the gunshot, it will be all over. Completely finished. Let's go back to the house. the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders. And the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3.5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. This is your host back again. Just a reminder of our rendezvous next week. Where are we going? Through the creaking door? Of course. <laughs> Manufacturers of State Express 3.5's Filter King cigarettes invite you to listen next Saturday at 9 o'clock when they will again present The Creaking Door.